Hey guys, this is Ben from iCrave Network. Welcome back to Box Office with Ben, where I break down the weekly box office numbers. It's been a couple weeks since I've made one of these episodes, so we got a lot to talk about. Uh, Top Gun Maverick has been killing it at the box office. Jurassic World Dominion opened. Uh, Lightyear opened this weekend, so let's just jump right into it. So number one at the box office this weekend was Jurassic World Dominion, not Lightyear, with another 58.6 million dollars, which is a 59.6% drop. This is a pretty solid second weekend hold for Jurassic World. Um, not fantastic, but a solid hold. It's about on par with um, the last Jurassic World, actually. That movie opened to an almost identical number as this installment, and it dropped almost an identical number in its second weekend. It dropped about 60%. Fallen Kingdom went on to make, I believe, $1.3 billion. So that ain't looking too bad for Jurassic World Dominion, though I don't think it'll hit one billion. I think it'll come close, but I don't know if it's gonna hit that 1 billion mark. It's already made over $600 million though worldwide, so it could be on its way to 1 billion. It'll be interesting to see. We'll follow it in the coming weeks and, uh, and find out, but a big success for Universal for sure. All right, so number two at the box office was Lightyear. Lightyear opened this weekend with $51 million. Now, there's a lot to break down here. So obviously this is not what Disney was hoping for with Lightyear. Um, a couple weeks ago, the projections were upwards of $100 million, $90 million, $100 million. And as we approached the weekend, the projections were, were in the, the 70 to 80 range. So this is, this is significantly lower than the initial projections. Definitely a bit of a disappointing number when you consider um, what franchise this is a part of, the Toy Story franchise. So why did this happen? I think that this is a very, very interesting discussion, and I think there's a lot of factors at play here for why this movie opened where it did. So number one is marketing confusion. I think a lot of people were confused as to what this movie is. Is it the human buzz from the Toy Story universe? Is it the toy buzz? But it's played by... Chris Evans on Tim Allen, so is this connected to the universe, is this separate? And I don't think it was super well communicated in the marketing, plus I don't think that the marketing really hooked people. I didn't hear a lot of people talking about this movie when the trailers came out. Number two is the controversy that has surrounded this movie, which honestly, a lot of it is just so unnecessary, but there has been a lot of division over the decisions that were made in this movie, whether it be replacing Tim Allen with Chris Evans, whether it be the LGBT representation, there is a lot of division and a lot of people angry with the decisions made. Number three, I think its release schedule was just poor placement. We just came off of a big, massive family blockbuster in Jurassic World Dominion last weekend, which opened huge. And also Top Gun Maverick, which is also a four quadrant movie, continues to do incredible. It's an absolute phenomenon, which we'll get to later. So when you have those two movies absolutely killing it at the box office, that takes a lot of people away. People don't go to the movies every single week. So a lot of people went to see Jurassic World Dominion and Top Gun Maverick. Therefore, they weren't so willing to go back again to see Lightyear. So I think that's another big reason. And then what I think is the biggest reason is Disney Plus. So obviously during COVID, Disney decided to experiment a little bit and put their movies on Disney Plus, whether it be on Disney Plus for free or with the PVOD uh, price tag attached to it. Either way, their movies skip the theatrical window and run right to Disney Plus. I think that this has trained families to wait. Families know that Lightyear is gonna be on Disney Plus probably within a couple months. So they know that, hey, if we just stay at home, we can watch Lightyear pretty soon and not have to spend all the money to go to the theater because a whole family going to the theater is pretty expensive. That's a big outing for a family. Another good example of this is Encanto. Now Encanto came out during more of the peak of the pandemic, but still, it was released in theaters and it didn't do super well. It made, I believe like $11 million in its opening weekend. It didn't make a lot of money at the box office. It didn't even hit a hundred million dollars domestically. And then it went into Disney Plus and what happened? It blew up. It became an absolute phenomenon because 
families just waited for it to go on Disney Plus. So I think that was a good representation of families' mentalities at this point, and I think that's gonna be carried over with Lightyear. This is a big discussion. There's a lot more I could say about this situation. I find it fascinating, but yeah, this is a little bit of a disappointing number, but there are a couple of things to consider when talking about this, this number. Number one, this is the first Pixar movie to hit theaters since 2020. No Pixar movie has hit theaters since Onward, and that was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Its box office was actually hit from the pandemic. Another thing is that this is the biggest opening for an animated film since Frozen 2 in 2019. Now, even if we want to say it's a disappointing number, that is something to keep in mind. This is the biggest opening since Frozen 2, and I think it's a stepping stone to getting families fully back to watching animated movies in the theaters. Again, like I said, I think that we got to train audiences again to see these movies in theaters and not expect them on Disney Plus or other streaming services. Also, one other thing that I found pretty interesting is when you look at the other recent opening weekends for Pixar films, it actually did better than Onward and it did about on par with Coco. Now, Coco went on to make almost $800 million worldwide. So that's not to say that Lightyear is an absolute failure or anything at this point. It could hold very, very well in the coming weeks and have incredible legs and make some good money. Now, it's a bit of an unfair comparison because Coco did really, really well overseas. It actually made the majority of its money overseas, but that's still something to remember. Coco did just as well as Lightyear did in its opening weekend. Okay, so that's it for our discussion of Lightyear. Very interesting discussion. Um, it's gonna be very interesting to see how it continues to do in the following weeks, if it will hold well, if it will drop off. We'll find out, but it's very interesting. By the way, I love the movie. I think Lightyear is incredible. Um, so I really hope that Lightyear does well. Anyways, number three at the box office is Top Gun Maverick with another $44 million, which is only a 15.1% drop. That's insane. Top Gun Maverick is an absolute phenomenon at the box office and continues to crush it. It's breaking records. This is the second highest fourth weekend just behind Avatar. Avatar, which is like the movie that is known for its incredible legs. So that just shows you how well Top Gun Maverick is doing and how much audiences are loving this movie. Top Gun has done so much better than I ever expected it to do. It's now over uh, $450 million domestically and coming close to $900 million worldwide. This is gonna hit a billion dollars and I would have never guessed that this was gonna hit a billion dollars. This could be the biggest film of the summer at the end of the day. And then at number four, we got Doctor Strange 2, which is slowing down at this point, only made another $4.2 million, which is a 19.5% drop. Doctor Strange 2 is pretty much done at this point, um, but it's over $400 million domestically, and it's past $900 million worldwide. It's actually past $950 million worldwide. This is a big success, despite uh, what some people may tell you. This has done very well. It won't hit $1 billion at this point, but Marvel should still be very happy with this number. I believe it's the 10th highest grossing Marvel film of all time. And then at number five, we have Bob's Burger, which the box office is mainly ruled by the top four as Bob's Burger only made uh, another $1.1 million, which is a 55.4% drop. But uh, this has made almost $30 million domestically, which isn't incredible, but a little bit better than I anticipated it doing. Um, going into its release. As for the rest of the top 10, Everything Everywhere All at Once continues to do pretty well. It recently became A24's highest grossing film of all time, which is so awesome. What an incredible film, and I'm so happy that uh, that it took that crown. Bad Guys continues to hold pretty well as well, coming up on $100 million domestically. As for next week, we have two wide releases, uh, The Black Phone and Elvis. As for my prediction for The Black Phone, I'm gonna put it at $12 million, which I don't know if that's a little generous or not. I think this movie could do pretty well. I've heard really good things about it, so I think it's gonna have pretty good legs. I just don't know how well it's gonna open. I'm gonna give it an audience score prediction of 85%, which is pretty high for a horror movie, and a cinema score prediction of a B plus, which again, is very high for a horror movie, but I've heard that this is a little bit more accessible and one that audiences may like a little bit more. As for Elvis, I'm gonna put my prediction at $40 million, which is a little low. I think it's gonna be received somewhat well from audiences, 
but not incredibly well. Maybe it'll get a 75% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and I can put my cinema score prediction at a B plus. Anyways, that is it for the box office this weekend. Let me know down in the comments why you think Lightyear had a little bit of a disappointing opening, and uh, what you think of Top Gun Maverick continuing to kill it at the box office. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back with the box office next week. See ya.